Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our morning inspiration. Friday, March 1st, 2024. I pray that you are all doing well and that you are in good spirit. Our reading today, it comes to us from Genesis chapter 6, reading verses 1 to 7. It says, And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they choose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, yet his day shall be an hundred and twenty years. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men, which were of old, men of renown. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. Seven and last, and the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and the creeping things, and the fowls of the air, for it repented me that I have made them. Amen. We give God thanks this morning for his word. Now, these are some stern words coming from God here. And this is... A story that we are all familiar with, the story of Noah, or as we oftentimes call it, the antediluvian world. Now, the inhabitants of the antediluvian world were turned away from God. They went after their own desires, their own lusts, and as the Bible says that their heart and the intent of their heart was wickedness continually and because of how wicked they were and how evil they were and how they had no regards for god and for the things of god god said that he was sorry he actually regret that he had made man and for god to say that he regretted that he made man or he pained him to his heart when somebody express that kind of emotion it means that it really grieved them to their core and i know many of you know what i'm talking about because you have experienced anger before and you have experienced regret before so you kind of have an idea of what god was experiencing in here so god said look here man these people they are just bent on wickedness and they just make me angry they just make me upset and it seems as if they have no intention of changing or repenting i am going to have to destroy them and so god made a decision that look here i am going to destroy everything i am going to destroy man i'm going to destroy beasts i'm going to destroy the fowl of the air the creeping things and so he instructed noah build a boat and noah build a boat and of course, Noah built the boat that was a huge boat that Noah was building. And of course, the people, they never make Noah's job any easier. They laugh Noah to scorn and they mock and they jeer him. Because when Noah told the people what was going to happen, when, they, when he warned them of the impending judgment and the destruction of the world, of course, they did not believe him and they mock him and they they call him all kind of name they just jeer they did not accept the, the warning and the message and then it was too late the flood came and it destroyed man and beast the earth went through a cleansing or a, or a period of purification during that flood everything was wiped off the face of the earth except for Noah and his family who was on the ark and those animals and it's so interesting about that that the animals they had sense enough to know that they need to run to safety but intelligent human beings found it ridiculous that they needed to run to safety and so they did not so 
you wonder who is the intelligent being and who is not something to think about and even today if you observe animals is the same kind of attitude that animals have when you have disaster who are the ones that are dying people right have you seen the animals the animals are nowhere to be found even the domesticated ones they somehow escape the impending danger very rare you find the animals dying in disaster because they know when danger is coming it's just us as human beings seem not to know when danger is coming or maybe we just don't care and so we are always caught in the middle or find ourselves in the situation when it's too late come on man the bible said that we are intelligent and we need to use the brain that we have been given we need to be smart we are not full full people so why we keep acting so foolish what is the point i'm trying to make here just like the antediluvian world we are also living in a time of great evil and God is going to cleanse his hurt once more. Isn't that what he said in his word? He said that he's going to destroy this hurt. And he's going to what? Cleanse it and make it new once again. Now, we are given a message to tell the world. Tell them of the impending judgment and the impending danger that is ahead of them. And those who refuse to run to safety, those who will not repent, those who will not change from their evil ways and the wickedness that they practice, that they will be destroyed just like those persons in the antediluvian world. And so at this point, the ark door is open and God is calling man and woman into the ark of safety. But the sad reality is that just as the men and women of Noah's time laughed at him while he was there preaching, he preached for 120 years and these people did not budge. They did not budge, not even one. Imagine that, an entire civilization, an entire world was destroyed, not one except Noah's family. That's a very, very sad state and something that we need to think about. Now we are given the opportunity where we can save ourselves. Save ourselves meaning that we can run to him who is able to save us from this destruction that is coming. He said that what? He's going to purge this earth with fire this time so it won't be water. Has fire ever burned anybody? I have, I have felt the burn of fire before and I know it is not anything pretty. And God is saying that he's going to destroy sin and anyone who has sin in them. When he comes to cleanse this earth, they will be destroyed. So what will be your choice? Are you going to make the decision like those folks in Noah's time to refuse the warning, to ignore sound doctrine, to ignore the message and the messenger and ultimately ignore God and choose death? I don't know where you stand at this point in your relationship with God. But I encourage all of us, including myself, that we figure out what it is that we want out of this life. If it is that we want the world or we want Jesus and the life to come. Because if it is the world that you want and if it is the world that I want, then we have made the same choice like those people in Noah's time. And that would be very, very sad. And when we look at the world today, and see the magnitude of evil and people they mock God to his very face they want nothing to do with God when you look at leaders of the world the profanities and the, the disrespect that they throw in God's face the blasphemous acts the disregard for godly things you wonder where is this world heading it can't be anywhere good because we are rejecting the very source of life the very source of life and so when we think about what we are doing can we securely say that we are making good choice that will ultimately be profitable to us at the end friends this message in Genesis 6, I would advise that we go back 
and read it carefully because the same thing that happened in Genesis 6 is the very thing that is going to happen again. And it won't be 50 million years from now or 50,000 million years from now. It will be sooner than you and I think. Every decision that you and I make is going to add up. And for those of us who are playing church and for those of us who want nothing to do with church, we need to shape up. We need to get our act together because God is not coming back to pardon anybody. Any pardoning that you want, you got to get it now. When he come, he's just coming to collect and to give pay. That's all he's coming for. No more pardon. Mercy door and mercy will be closed. And so just like he shut the ark door and when the destruction started, no one was saved if we do not repent if we do not change from our evil ways if we do not surrender to god we will be destroyed without a doubt the scripture says that not one word will go back to god void and so anything that he says it will happen it will come to pass and no man can change his word except him may we be encouraged and may we also look into our hearts, see those things that we need to get rid of. And for those who keep rejecting God and keep rejecting the gospel and the message, remember that you have a lot at stake here, a lot at stake. So make the decision to serve God because you won't regret it. Don't, work, don't, don't watch your friends. Don't watch your families. Don't watch those who will discourage you and tell you that Christianity and church and all of these things is a bunch of rubbish. Don't listen to them because they did the very same thing to Noah. They, they ridiculed him for what he was doing. And what happened in the end? They were destroyed. Do you want to be destroyed? I know none of us want to be destroyed. And don't be afraid of what I'm saying. I am not saying all of this scary stuff to drive fear into any of you. Or to make you go serve God out of fear. All I am saying is that God loves us and it only makes sense to put our lives in his hands. That's all I am saying because he loves us. Don't reject him. So I am not trying to scare anybody. But I have to tell you the truth and the reality of what we are living in right now. Okay? So cheer up. Look at the positive side. And so think about what I am saying this morning. Think about it. Pick something out of it that you can use to help guide your life. And don't reject the word of God. These are not my words. And as I say, go back and read. It is Genesis chapter 6. It is there. I will be posting it also in the video, the entire chapter. So you can go and read it. Please do. Because I guarantee you, you won't regret the message that you will get from it. May God continue to bless you. And may God keep you friends. As we look for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And as we continue to be faithful to him. Amen.